Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going into almost the cult classic home style, the shipping container home. You either love it or you hate it, but you cannot deny that they have made a huge impact on the housing market, the tiny home movement, and are they're just here to stay. Naturally, I am building in the eco-living world Evergreen Harbor, but these homes are super versatile. They've been used across the states, across the world, and they can really be styled to fit anywhere. We are going to stick with mostly eco-living sort of stuff today, but add whatever pack you want onto it and bam, it fits in that world. Shipping containers come in all shapes and sizes, but the three most common are all eight to eight and a half feet tall and wide, 10, 20, or 40 feet long. A shipping container home takes one or many of these containers, secures them together, then retrofits the inside to be a suitable habitation. If you are able to recycle used containers that are no longer in use, not have to transport them far, have a minimal amount of insulating and refitting to do based on climate and lifestyle, and are able to do some of or most of the work yourself, these can indeed be extremely eco-friendly homes. Of course, in The Sims, all we have to do to be eco is add solar panels and a rain collector, so that's pretty easy. Other advantages that overlap the real world and Sims world include modular appeal. You don't really have to worry about how wide your room is going to be if you only have one option. Cons are the same. Without major expenses or having to refit everything, you're very limited on these sort of sizes and spaces that you have available to you. However, one con you don't have to worry about in The Sims is whether or not your bedroom used to haul toxic chemicals. If you want to learn more about shipping container homes or just get some cool reference photos, don't forget to check out the Pinterest link in the description. So if you've been with this channel for more than in, like two episodes you know that I just go way too far in depth on everything and the first thing we have to do today is decide a scale which of course is going to be locked into these tiles so how big are the tiles they are 32 inches a piece now I know on Facebook people tell you oh they're 24 inches or oh they're 36 inches they are all wrong I will die on this hill they are 32 inches and here's how I know so first we have the walls the drywall walls now a sheet of drywall is typically four feet wide clearly these tiles are not four feet. So what it looks like happened is these drywall sheets were trimmed down and laid vertically for whatever reason. It's a total waste of drywall, but anyway, to sort of cover two studs worth because there's no way this is one stud. At most, one stud is going to be 24 inches and the standard is 16. So it's probably sheets of drywall trimmed down, laid vertically for goodness knows why, to cover two studs, which would explain all these little grids, right? This is where all the studs are, which means each spacing is 16 inches. Therefore, 32 inches. Still don't believe me? Let's look at some standard household objects. Standard refrigerators are 28 to 32 inches. If this is 32 inches, this fits the 28 to 32 inches. We even have some slightly wider options and they still fit in that 28 to 32 inch range. Then you come to mattresses. Whether this is a full or a queen, either way it is well under 60 inches and this to here would be 64 inches. So whether this is 54 inches or 60 inches wide, there's no way they would take up this much space if these were 36 inches because that would have been a whole six feet wide, too wide. So this is what you signed up for for clicking on the video. If you have evidence supporting otherwise, let me know in the comments. I don't know if Sims ever released like a, an actual comment on this or whatever, but it is my firmly held belief that the tiles are 32 inches. So going off of that, our shipping containers are going to be three tiles wide which is about eight feet and then four tiles deep which would be 10 feet eight tiles deep for 20 feet or 16 tiles deep for 40 feet this size lines right up with the shipping container door that comes with the eco living pack eco lifestyle however this is a video game and some things you know you can't just like scooch around like you can in real life so if you find that three tiles wide is too restrictive you can go to four tiles wide just move the door to the middle and i will forgive you i will find the space in my heart so three or four tiles wide and then our depths are going to be four tiles eight tiles and 16 tiles are there other sizes of shipping container yes however these are the most standard and you can see that this one matches up with this one pretty well if I sort of hold the ghost frame over there. It's not exact, but again, video game, it is how it is. So for the very most basic shipping container house, you're going to start with a shipping container. Let's go with a 20 footer. And I'll be using base scheme and eco lifestyle today. Also sticking with short wall height. I don't know if I made that clear or not. Also, when did I turn on move objects? Yeah, move objects is on. I don't remember doing that. So strange. Okay. Anyway, short wall height is going to be the closest to that eight, eight and a half foot mark that we're looking at. And of course we have the shipping container sort of sides and the flooring is under the metal flooring. And we have two different options here that you can match up. And there's a standard 20 foot shipping container. You can make a whole tiny house in this. In fact, this fits under the micro home tier. The child is singing baby shark. I don't know if you can hear him, but I can hear him loud and clear. So if you want to keep the most shipping container, you're still going to want to add a couple of windows, but you're going to be very strategic and probably prioritize the inside layout. These are my favorite homes to sort of build when I'm doing a rags to riches because like you can get used shipping containers for fairly cheap, even though the construction cost isn't that cheap, like in game, like with story storyline you know sort of gameplay it, it works it's either that or i make an a-frame out of a roof piece 
So inside you could go for some corrugated metal, you could go with the same thing from the outside, or you could use anything else and just say that like your sim drywalled over it or whatever. I don't know why I picked orange, but it's too late to change now. If you want a full size bed in here, I believe they have actually fixed the scooting so you can place it this way which is super handy. You can add on a half bath sort of thing here. And again, I'm going based off of like nerddom, how I play the game. Any interior walls will not be the metal paneling. Um, they'll be something else. I like to use this one because it looks like you so just sort of bought some room partitions and threw them up. And then inside the bathroom, you can very easily fit a toilet and a shower. And then along this wall is where you're going to put your kitchen. All right, I've turned off move objects. So just so that you can see that these in fact do all fit in here. Once you have your layout situated, then you can throw down a couple of windows. But again, if you're going for like the most sort of, I don't think rustic is the right word, but like the cheapest sort of most container house option, you're just gonna grab a couple of smaller windows, place them strategically, and you have a shipping container home. So there's a level one for the sake of this video, shipping container home. Of course, you can make this bigger. If you elongated it, you could almost lay it out like a shotgun and have rooms sort of be walked through. And suddenly you have a significantly more spacious home with a whole living room, kitchen, dining, bathroom, and bedroom area. So there's a lot you can do in just a three tile wide space. At some point though, you just need more space. So let's talk about tier two. Again, for the sake of this video, these tiers mean nothing in real life. And how to actually join multiple shipping containers together to expand your home, how you're going to handle transitions from one container to the other, and so on. I can find it really helpful to actually lay out my shipping container sizes before I start building, because then I can sort of look at it and see how I want to pull things together. For example, I can take this one and copy and place it here and say, I want that to be my kitchen. And then I want a living dining space here. And I think I'm going to add a deck here, right? That's pretty good. And now I have to decide what I want to do about bedrooms. Well, maybe I want two bedrooms and a bathroom. So I'll take this one two more times and place one here and here add another deck back here. And that's a pretty good starting layout here. So I can get rid of my reference sizes. I like to paint all of my containers to sort of keep them separate and remind my brain what we're doing. Um, but you can't just like shift and paint the whole room up top. So you will have to place sort of by container. And don't forget to use the greater than and less than keys to rotate your floor to make sure you're facing in the right direction. That's a little more work, but I think it's totally worth it. All right, so now that I have my layout, I have to decide where I want to enter from. And typically you'd enter at the end of a shipping container, but I don't really want to enter through my kitchen. I may place a door there anyway, just for decoration, but it will not be functional. So my entrance will be on this side, which means I just have to scooch my deck over. Now we'll run some electricity so we can see what we're doing. And now we can talk about opening the spaces one into another. Cause I already talked about how to add walls. I refuse to just completely remove any of the walls that connect the shipping containers. First of all, because labor-wise, that's going to be a lot of work. Secondly, because it reminds us of our roots. So one option that I go for a lot is a spandrel to just sort of partially open it or some of these nice big industrial sort of arches. I'm going to turn on move objects again to finish up this kitchen. I'm going to use control shift C and then BB dot move objects on. That's because I know I don't want this door to be functional. I simply want it to be decorative, but if I don't turn on move objects, I won't be able to place the counter there. This feels like a good opportunity to use the vault counters. They look pretty industrial. And just like that, that's a pretty good sized little kitchen. I'm going to add some cabinets to this wall. And one of the reasons I like this particular fridge is because you can actually put like a full normal size cabinet on top of it, which is lovely. And then over here, I'll add some windows. Again, sticking with that sort of industrial style. Will this be more expensive than just cutting a hole in the wall? Of course, but clearly someone actually wants to live here with some relative style and taste. So we'll let them have the window. Now for these containers, I'm left with a couple of options. I could open up into them with arches and place multiple rooms in them that way, or I could divide them with a wall like this and add some doors coming from the outside. So that could easily be two bedrooms there. And then perhaps we'll have a nice family bath that walks through to the main bedroom. We're all about ingenuity with these builds. Now, if I want to tone down this color a bit, the most I'm probably going to do is add something to the wall that looks like you could pretty easily put it on top. Something like some wood paneling like this. Same goes for the floor. I'm probably not going to be looking at doing carpet or anything like that, which would take significantly more work to actually lay over the metal floor. But a little bit of a makeover on the internal space can really warm it up and help it feel a little less like, you know, cold steel. Plus it serves to insulate, which is important if you're living anywhere not warm. I know I don't typically go through and decorate, but something about shipping container homes just gets to me and it's like, I can't not. 
but this is a pretty decent sized little family bathroom, three tiles by three tiles, pretty standard size. I don't think it's any secret here that I really, really do like the eco living windows. They're kind of impractical in a lot of ways just because they're so boxy, but I like them quite a bit. Another way you can sort of warm up your home is to actually add a real roof. A half gable that sort of borrows from the mid-century modern feel is super common. And don't forget to add some columns. You can top this with some solar panels or even keep the steel roof look. And your sims will complain if you just leave the construction concrete, but you can put down some sidewalk slabs and magically they're happy. With a little bit of creativity and move objects, even your wildest container home dreams can come true. Back to square one to talk about level three, which is just the glam side, I suppose, if there was one of shipping container homes. We're talking non-container additions, we're talking fancy architectural details, we're talking decks, multiple levels, like pools, all sorts of great stuff. So for the most part, we are still going to be working with largely these sort of original shapes, but I'm going to start with a base of two of my 40 foot shipping containers, add a 10 foot one here, and then upstairs, Stairs. We can have some indoor outdoor living space. Maybe we'll even add a little observatory since we have a normal sized telescope now. And immediately, this is already looking so much more complicated. I'm going to fill in some of the spaces with some decking, just because actually having a floor in place is going to make it a lot easier to do some of the other stuff. So just placing my flat squares and then sizing them into place sizing them into place, whatever. We will put this one on a bit of a foundation and I like to use like a combination of these thicker sort of supports on the decks and a more concrete looking one under my actual containers. It's very common to mix man-made and organic materials when you're sort of doing the, I don't know if there's a style name for this, so I'm gonna call it quote glam unquote shipping container homes, but these have come to popularity under the contemporary style. So if you watched that video, if you haven't, I recommend it. We talked about the shapes that are popular and why and mixing and matching materials and they all come together very, very well in the shipping container home. So I'm going to go ahead and use a mix of this plaster for sort of my base building, but then I'm going to accentuate it with this nice warm wood paneling. Now, of course we need way to get up to our levels up here. We can add internal or external stairs. For my observatory, I know that I want a ladder out here. I just think that's going to look cool. So I'm going to put that down. And then I think I want my stairs to be internal. So I'm going to place them around the back of this wall here. And that should lead me right into this area, which can easily become a home office and I can have plenty of bedroom space up here. Now to open up these walls a bit, I'm going to be using a spandrel, but I'm going to hold alt so that I can only place it on certain tiles. Um, instead of like the whole wall. And I'm going to add in some walls to make a main level bathroom here. I think I'll put kitchen here, dining. This can be miscellaneous living space, sort of an office here, and then upstairs. We can fit a bathroom here. It narrows the hall a little bit, but again, shipping containers, we have some limitations. This can be either one whole big bedroom or we can add sort of an external hall here again and remove those walls by holding control. I don't typically advocate for adding walls to shipping container homes unless you're going for this more like high style sort of version because part of the charm is sticking within your limits of the shipping containers. But if you have this much money, you can add some uh, some drywall and cut down some walls. And then over here, this will be our main bedroom. So I'll do a slightly larger bedroom and an ensuite. And that'll about do it for a floor plan. If you ever have space to use these giant sliding doors. I have to advocate for it. They are beautiful. And if we're sticking with contemporary, we can of course grab some of these floor to ceiling windows and place them along the rest of the outside. Beautiful. I'm just going to paint this little bump out to match. And let's talk about roof. Because we're sort of disguising the shipping container aspect, I am going to use a more traditional roof on this one. Of course, there's only so much you can do with the shipping container house, but a lot of them use a sort of mid-century inspired roof style. So we can take a half gable, shrink it down a bit, and then just copy it and keep moving it along to match up with the rest of our walls. Like that. This will also allow us to very easily batch the paints and I'll replicate this same roof piece on this side. Now, I kind of wanted this one to be a bit of an observatory, so I'm going to add a glass roof up here. Place a hipped roof give it a little bit of a curve, add a glass texture, and we'll work on that more in a minute. For the rest of my roof texture, we could go with steel, the solar panel things, eco steel, which is shiny and fun, or literally anything else. Don't forget some trim that complements. I want to add some jutting exterior trim to the base of this building right here. The ladder messes with it a little bit. And another one of my favorite things to do is take these lines in the wall, and it works best if you place a wall first. But you can take the lines in the wall, place some like this, and then you can slightly raise some to sort of match with your roof here. And then we'll remove this wall 
Again, we have move objects on, so that'll stay. And that's just nifty. While we're out here, I suppose we'll add a fence. And if you want a little more detail, you can grab the inlaid exterior trim in a color that sort of matches the top railing of your fence. And then if you put it on your deck pieces, it's easier to see over here, you'll get that little bit of a border, which can be a nice detail as well. In sticking with the reclaimed lumber sort of colors and styles, I'm going to go with the Eco Living Floor. Um, it doesn't 100% match, and I'm going to place this inside as well. And I think we just need to add a few more windows outside. I know this is a bathroom, but because we have these vertical panels here, it acts almost like a privacy blind. We could even do the same thing over here for like symmetry or whatever. I don't have space for the sliding glass doors upstairs so I'm just going to have to go with a normal door and a whole bunch of windows again. This will be nice because we have those stairs right there so this will help some more internal light get down into this area. Internal light? Whatever. This is going to be my kitchen space and we have a bathroom right here so I'll probably actually delete these windows. But this will make a really nice living area. And the last place we have to add some windows is to our observatory room. Oh, if you don't want this roof piece clipping in like this, you can just hold shift and push that eave back. On this side, that means we'll have to copy the roof again, shrink it down, and add another eave on this side. That looks better though. For the inside, I'm just going to use the plaster again, and then I may go back in with some of that reclaimed lumber to add some accent walls. And before I do anything else, I need to remember to add some internal doors. I don't really want to use these in this one, they're a little bit too industrial, so instead I'm going to use the plain wooden door, which has some very nice modern swatches. And I can use this door to enter all the rest of the rooms. Now that I know where my kitchen is, I can go back in and add a couple of windows. And I am going to add this one because with move objects on, you can control 9 or just hold 9 depending on your um, computer system. Don't know why that's a, a thing. Um, you can actually raise plants up and sort of like put them on the windowsill, which I think is super cute and super great for a kitchen. Nothing too fancy for the main floor bath and just my standard family bath layout for upstairs. Not very exciting, but it works. I know bathtubs in front of windows are controversial, but it's The Sims 4, they can't see through windows, so it's fine. And of course a telescope. I feel like black would be a better color for this room. Light pollution and whatever. Alright, I am going to landscape this one. If you haven't already, I recommend subscribing to the channel. We do all sorts of crazy nerd build things um, like this one where I just go too way into depth and then I forget how much I like building container homes and I spend too much time decorating the container home and then I'm like, do I even have time to finish recording this? And yeah, stuff like that. Also, I forgot to add stairs. Yeah, this video is just not very organized at all. I'm sorry, guys. I don't really have a very good reason, but it's not. All right, well, I forgot to add stairs in the front, so we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna use the same stairs I used inside and line those right up with my whole front door here. I do need a door coming out here as well, and because I want to make sure I have as much space as possible for a bed, I'm just gonna stick with the normal sliding doors if I can find them. Hey there. Now, I did mention pools, so I'm going to feel bad if I don't actually follow up on that. But if you want to add a pool to your eco build, a great way to do that is actually add a pool in the dimensions of a shipping container. So it'll be three tiles wide and then four or eight tiles deep. Looks like ours is going to be three by four. Oh, I used the round foundation. Three by four. And then I'm actually going to side this as if it is still a container because I just think that's funny. I also really like this sort of privacy fence that comes with the Eco Lifestyle pack, and I can almost get it to stay the same height if I use the two different heights and then just sort of fence in my backyard here. If you really want to go for the eco-conscious route, adding some stuff to your backyard can help, um, but if you don't want it to sort of disrupt your aesthetics, you can always make a little fenced-in area and put all your eco stuff in here. Most of it can be found in the outdoor activities and skills portion, but we have anything from these water collectors to solar panels, to wind turbines. Now there are both standing and rooftop wind turbines and solar panels. Um, the main difference is price and which ones like break more. But basically this will take care of a lot of your house's water and power needs. Other good things to add are planter boxes, bug boxes, which admittedly I have not played with much. And these standing planters are cute too. There's tons of other stuff in here as well. There's the recycling machine, there's candle making stuff, there's generator, all sorts of good stuff. But as far as actual plants go, you kind of can go in three directions. You can go for more of the eco and sustainable style where you're really not going to have much landscaping and you're going to focus on stuff like gardening and producing power and water. You can go for much more modern landscaping, which is going to be very symmetrical and geometric. Or you can go for world matching landscaping, which is what we do on most of our builds. If I want to do some modern landscaping, I can add a little platform on the front here, add some vertical panels like this, some dirt, and some plants that don't look too crazy, something very well manicured or quite angular. Now these guys aren't quite fitting in my box even if I scale them down, so I will have to raise them up, but that's a really good example of modern landscaping. It involves a lot of geometry, minimal plants, a lot of symmetry, and pretty even spacing, which 
I tried. You can also create modern landscaping directly in the ground. Again, sort of following these same principles. You're gonna pick a plant, make it a reasonable size, space it out evenly, and it's uh, it's plants. Not much I'm going to be able to do for terrain paint on this lot because it is a very dirt, very dirty lot, very dirt, very much, much dirt, very much dirt. I need to go to bed. Anyway, uh, but I can add down some rocks for a path. And if we really wanted to, we could probably maintain a fairly small patch of grass in here. We just want to be eco-conscious of it. And there's the glam side of the shipping container home. A recap, there's really not much to it. You pretty much have three standard shipping container sizes that you can mix and match to make a home. You can add multiple levels or not. You can add decks or not. You can add extra pieces sort of sticking out if you want or not. It's extremely versatile, extremely adaptable. If you tend to be more of a rags to riches and or legacy player, homes like this can be super awesome because you can start out with just one container and then just add on as you go. It will progress naturally with the story. This one we took in sort of a more mid-century contemporary direction, but you could just easily add some thatch roofing, move it to Sulani, maybe open up some of the spaces a bit, and you have a great island house as well. Speaking of Sulani, if you missed yesterday's video, that's linked here. And if you want to see more videos on this playlist, you can watch the whole playlist in this card. This home, as well as the one we did before this, will both be on the gallery for you guys. Those details will be in the video description. I apologize again for me being a bit more scatterbrained today. I'm still determined to get daily uploads out this week, but as always, if I miss something, if something comes up, as it's prone to do, you know, when you're a parent, full-time. I will move any videos I missed just into November, so we will be carrying through the series into November a bit. I'll post here and there over the holidays and then be back with daily videos again in January. So that's what the next few months look like. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today, and I look forward to building with you again tomorrow. Bye!